We talk about um, a lot about how I overcame uh-huh. um, depression. God healed me, delivered me from 12 years of depression. Yeah. But I did not and was not able to overcome until I was filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I did not have the power uh-huh. to overcome. I could not fight that generational curse on my own. Yeah. But when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, it was like three, three months, months into it. Three months. I'm telling it was you, gone. three months gone. into it. I saw the spirit of depression leave my life forever. Hey, everybody. How are you guys today? Hey, everyone. Man, welcome to our podcast. Of course, this is season two of Doing Life with Ken and Tabitha. I'm Ken, and this is Tabitha. Been married 24 years, and we just love you guys. We love your feedback. We love what God is doing, using this medium to bring hope to people all around the world. When we started this podcast, we said, you know what? We want to help people grow closer to God and to the people that God has placed in their life. And by the sounds of it, I think we're doing okay. Amen. I think we're doing okay. Thank you for giving us all of the feedback, like he said, and um, writing in um, even testimonies that we hear. You know, I had one lady um, tell me that she just loves to watch me look at you. And she's just like, I love the way that you look at him. I want to be like that with my husband and I was just like really like how do I, I look at him to say that but right me. now like I, I just you? you you started out and I just started looking at you and I was reminded of what that lady said it's just because you're just so nice to look at well you're nice to look at too mm, yeah. thank you if I could sing I was saying you know I, I mean we just need to bring like old school R&B back I don't know what happened to I the am love a songs. fan yes. yes but anyway uh <laughs> Thank you for tuning in, everybody. If you're new to our podcast, hit the subscribe button so that you can be the first to get the content when it is released. Yes. There's a lot of great things that we have going on right now. Um, we have actually a boot camp that we've created mm-hmm. simply to help people have a better marriage. Yes. And by the sounds of it, there are so many of you all that have went through boot camp. It is absolutely amazing. And I'm just so honored to know that we had a small part to play in God using our boot camp to help whip your marriage into shape. Whip it. (laughs) Who just shouts out? (laughs) So what what is it? It's a 90-day journey with yours truly where we sit down with you guys online and we just talk marriage. And some of it, you know, you say, what's the difference between the podcast and the boot camp? The podcast is just like we're shooting everything. I'm talking about, we're talking about all kinds of things. This is a systematic, programmatic way to move your marriage from one phase to the next phase, making intentional investments of the 12 cornerstone, so to say, Mm -hmm. that marriages need to simply get better. And we're seeing it transform marriages. It's it's a boot camp. It's intense. It's It's a deep dive. Sometimes you need intensity. 90 Mm -hmm. days intense. Come on. If you want more information about our Better Marriage Boot Camp, go over to KenandTabitha.com. Of course, that link will be in our show notes. And we won't. This is what we say, that when you get better, the marriage will get better. Absolutely. And that's what it's all about. All right. Excited about today. Today's episode is called The Spirit-Filled Marriage. Mm. And this is our specialty. Ooh, here. I like that. Yeah, this is our specialty. You know, learned, years ago, I realized um, that the sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. Mm-hmm. Meaning that when we're led by the Holy Spirit, that is actually the marking of real maturity mm-hmm. in the walks of faith. And so hopefully we can help our those who are watching have a spirit-filled and spirit-led yes. marriage. And so our story is that we got married on July the 3rd, 1999. Mm-hmm. All right. So we had fireworks on the 3rd and the 4th. Come on, somebody. We got married in the 1900s, our, <laughs> That's what our, our youngest son say. would say. <laughs> Long time ago in the 1900s, we got <laughs> married. Um, but we parted like it was 1999 because it was 99. All right. Um, and I say this, we've been married for 24 years and I always joke and say it was the best 20, it's been the best two, 22 years of my life because mm-hmm. the first two years was absolutely, it was pretty bad. It was yeah, pretty challenging. Was hard. And um, thankfully we've turned things around now by the principles that we share with other people today. And it wasn't that I was a bad guy. You wasn't a bad gal. Um, it was just that we just didn't know certain things, you know. Um, for me, I was a, a Christian atheist. I define that as a person who believes in God, hmm. but lives like he doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. So I owned a Bible that I didn't read. I would go to church if it was convenient. Mm-hmm. Um, if you were to put me in the lineup with 10 of my closest friends that was unsaved, I drank like they drank, partied like they partied, slept around like they slept around. That's not an indictment towards my friends. Is It's just a spotlight on where I was. Yeah. I said I believed in God, but I lived like he didn't mm. exist. 
And it was really not just hurting me. It was really hurting our marriage. So when I say that we've been married for 24 years, it has been um, the best 22 years of my life. The first two years, I just didn't know how to be a husband, Mm -hmm. biblically speaking. I didn't know how, I didn't understand how to walk with God, nor less how to walk with his daughter. And so that's where we were. That's not where we are. But one of the keys was really when we received the Holy Spirit. You have something you want to jump on? I I do, because I want to say where I was, you know, in those first two years, Uh you know, I think the where we both were is that we were ignorant of the word of God. We knew Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We understood that he was the son of God Mm -hmm. and that he gave his life for Mm -hmm. us. So we understood those things. We were saved, but we would say like we were baby Christians. Mm -hmm. You can joke around and say we had fire insurance. If we died the next day, we would not go to hell. We would be in heaven with the Lord. But that's all. We weren't receiving we didn't have any, any crowns. Heaven here. We, and we didn't have any heaven here. Yeah, there was no heaven was on no earth for us. Life here. But you know what? Um, we didn't know we were baby Christians. We didn't know And that's it. the problem. Many people are baby Christians. Carnal Christians don't even know it. And I think we have to be great fruit inspectors. Mm-hmm. Look at the fruit that's in your life, and mm-hmm. then you can probably see a little bit about where you are. And it's just like, that's why we become born again. Yeah. So we're not born of the flesh again. We become spiritually born again. Yeah. And just like when you're born in the flesh, when you're born again in the spirit, you are a, spiritually, a spiritual baby. Mm-hmm. And you're going to mature in the things of God and in your walk with God just like you do. Mm -hmm. Um, in a natural world. Um, But where I was is I was depressed um, and I had been diagnosed with severe depression and anxiety disorder. I'd been depressed for 12 years Mm -hmm. and um, we were in the middle of this marriage. I was taking medication. I was trying my best to overcome Mm -hmm. and um, it was just hard for me. I just couldn't break out. I didn't have any power to overcome depression. Mm -hmm. Um, I went to counseling, Mm -hmm. therapy, Mm -hmm. everything, and I could not break out out. Mm -hmm. And there we were Mm -hmm. two years Mm -hmm. in a marriage, Mm -hmm. just graduated college, young in our profession. Kind of thinking if I want to stop the story right there, Mm -hmm. because I think that there's some of our audience when they hear your story, Mm -hmm. um, they take your side alone. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like when they hear that the two years of our marriage was bad, they almost kind of, they get upset with me Mm -hmm. because they say, well, you were depressed, almost like a victim, and you were going through things, and here I Mm -hmm. was taking my ring off, shutting down, not coming home, not eating your food, oh, wretched sinner (laughs) that I am, but you are this angel, and I should be so lucky that I married you. You know, those are some of the sentiments or some of the vibe that some get, not a lot, but just some, just Mm -hmm. some, just some. And But can you just kind of put a light on that a little bit? Yeah. I mean, I think we... You know, yes, you were there, but um, I remember, you know, being, how do I want to say this? So I guess what they're saying is, I mean, it's true. I mean, it's truth, um, what I did, what you did, what we both went through. However, uh, when it comes to me, let's say when we were dating, when we were dating, you know, I didn't come forth and tell you, look, I'm severely depressed and I have anxiety disorder. I have panic attacks. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't tell you those things. You didn't know any of that stuff until, I mean, like, I mean, a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I finally told you this information um, when we got married and before we got married, I told you that I had I was taking antidepressants. Mm-hmm. You knew that. But I still don't think you knew the extent in fact, I mean, I don't even think I knew the extent, you know, to be able to really say this is what we're dealing with here. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't really. You're not going where I thought you was going to go. So I, I don't you. know what you're talking okay. about. Like people try to make it out as if, oh, you are a victim because you're going through depression. And yeah, I, 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 I sympathize with the fact that that's a battle for you. But you were absent in the marriage. You wasn't there. Oh, yeah. You wasn't meeting my needs as a wife. You wasn't doing your re- biblical yeah. responsibilities as a wife. And what I'm saying is that sometimes people hear that and they're like, oh, I am didn't do this, but you, oh, poor Tabitha, I'm just so, gl-, you know. But it's not that. Like, if you are battling depression or anything that's causing you not to fulfill your responsibility as a wife or as a husband or as a spouse, you're not doing your part, 
that is a part to play in where the marriage is. Yeah. And uh-huh. you have to understand that your spouse, whether the man or the woman, if you go through a sickness, like when I went through cancer, mm-hmm. your spouse is going through it too. Mm-hmm. It was not easy for you to sit there and watch me go to sleep every night in the bed, you know, taking medicine and not being able to, you know, really function and do daily right. activities. And that was not easy for you to see Talk being about it. in what your easy? young twenties, right. you know? Um, and so I think yeah. when you Come do on. that, Give I don't have glory. anything else to say, but no, I'm saying it, All the glory belongs it's to not you. to point the finger, you know, it's, the, well, I'm it, just trying to paint because people don't understand that there's, and, and when any marriage is going down, there are always two sides of the coin. There, oh, there is. And my side, I own it. And I own it on this podcast, and I've told the world, I'm glad that dude's dead. Yeah. We had to kill that dude because he was up to no good. And he was unfaithful, and he was mean, and he was obnoxious. That's that old Ken. Mm-hmm. We had to kill him off. Mm-hmm. Okay? We died to him. Okay? But also... But when the- they hear the story, they don't look at the other side, that he was in a marriage where he wasn't receiving love. Yeah, you had been he abandoned in your marriage. I, I mean, literally... Emotionally and mentally. And yeah, I and there are literally moments of our marriage that you will come and tell me during those first two years. I do not remember a lot of it. Right. A lot of it is foggy. I can remember specific maybe, you know, birthday celebrations or something. Like that, but uh, I can't remember because I was so heavily medicated. Yeah. Like I was absent right. from our relationship. Right. And so you were just kind of, yeah, you were out there on your own. Yeah. Now we say, oh, we're best friends and we love each other. But they, it just, it was hard to be a best friend to someone who wasn't there. And that's not to make an excuse or say that your side was worse or my side was worse than your side. That's just to give it's another just side saying the that. Coin. But then that's I wanted all. to say this too, mm-hmm. is that we didn't know it at the time, but the end enemy knew the destiny on our life. Mm -hmm. The enemy knows the call on your life. The enemy knows the plans that God has for you. We didn't know it, Mm -hmm. but you were fighting things that you you were fighting for our future and Mm -hmm. our children and our children's children. You were fighting before I even came out of depression. Everything changed for us around September of 2001. Okay. And many people have heard this story. Um, I rededicated my life to Jesus we found a good church. Mm-hmm. We got plugged into the church because you need leadership. Mm-hmm. You need marriage mentors. You really do. But I think one of the things that really changed us is that I got filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm. Okay. And, and I want to explain too. that today. Um, I got saved when I was about 11 years old, meaning that I took a step towards Jesus, confessing him as Lord. And there's many people who's watching it that you do believe that Jesus is Lord. And when you accept Jesus, the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you, okay? But there is a second and a separate experience where the Holy Spirit Mm. comes upon you, giving you supernatural power to Mm -hmm. live as a victorious Christian. He gives you exousia, which is authority. He gives you dunamis, which is the miracle working power of God. And here's the deal, people of God, this is available for everybody. Every born again believer all over the world, we all need to receive Jesus, to be born again, but we also need the infilling of the Holy Spirit or what the scripture says is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We all need to be, we all need the second experience where he comes upon Mm -hmm. us. The best way that I could describe it is like drinking this water. Like when I drink it, it's on the inside of me, that salvation. But if I pour it over top of my head, okay, it's on the outside of me or I am drenched in it that is what we call the baptism yeah. of the Holy Spirit. You want me to pour it over your head? I don't. But it, it is it is similar to drinking water versus jumping in the pool. And there are so many people, I mean, people that love Jesus, but they just don't yeah. know about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And they have even been taught incorrectly about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, where they reject it or think that they have something that they don't have. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm telling you now. Um, It is the bullets in your gun. See, a lot of people got the gun, but they ain't got no bullets in the gun. And that's why the devil is beating you up because you're lacking ammunition. Today, we want to get some bullets in your gun. And this is what changed it for us. Mm -hmm. I think the first one Mm -hmm. is worse, is knowing about the Holy Spirit, but rejecting it or hearing, you know, wrong doctrine. I wouldn't say it. I would say him because the Holy Spirit is a a personal pronoun. He, him, Holy Spirit. You're right. Um, I would say that that is worse than... Being where Mm -hmm. I was, where I did not know Mm -hmm. about he, him, the Holy Spirit. I didn't know about him. Mm -hmm. And so when I heard of him, I just received like. Yeah, you didn't have any doctrinal limits. And for those of you all that you've been raised in some kind of denomination, 
um, that really didn't understand the Holy Spirit, we pray that you just be patient with us as we try to explain some things today that we feel is going to take your walk with Jesus to mm -hmm. another level. How it happened for us is that we were out to dinner with a couple, and um, they we, we were brand new to the faith. We were brand new to a church. We had a couple that invited me to church, and they made me a cake, and I like cake, so I came. And that couple kind of discipled me and Tabitha for a while. And uh, one day we were out to dinner. I think it was at the Outback State House in Oxon Hill, Maryland. And uh, on the way home, they were driving. Me and you were in the back seat, and they were in the front seat. And so we pulled up to our town home. And um, as they pulled up, they said, hey, is it okay if we pray? Mm -hmm. And they looked to the back seat. We was like, sure, you can go ahead and pray. And we said, and then they asked, is it okay if we pray in tongues? And we said, sure. You know, we didn't do whatever you want to do. It doesn't have anything yep. to do with us. And they just took about 30 or 60 seconds, and they just began to pray in the Holy Spirit just a little bit, pray in other tongues. Nothing weird, nothing strange, very gentle. And then they looked in the back seat, and they said, okay, guys, well, good night, after they did that for about 60 seconds. And so what I did is I went into my town home. I'm about 23 years old. I'm new to the things of God. Probably a few months ago, I was out in the club, and I'm just, I'm brand new to this thing. But I went and I said, God, I want to be able to pray like those people prayed. I got filled with the Holy Spirit and began to pray in tongues, not in church, not with a worship team, not with a goosebump feeling, simply because I asked God and yep. he gave it to me. I came down. We had a two bedroom town home. And I don't know if we talked that night. It seemed like it was the next day, right? I think so, because that night... Uh -huh. I left from the car. Uh -huh. I went upstairs into our bedroom mm -hmm. and I kneeled on my knees next to the bed mm -hmm. and I prayed and said, God, I want to pray like they prayed. Mm -hmm. And then I started praying in the Holy Spirit. And so what I would want people to know is that we didn't talk about this to mm -hmm. each other. I came down the next day and I was like, sweetheart, I can pray like those people could last night. And you was like, well, me too. <laughs> Meaning it's that, funny. Yeah, it, we were bold enough and had enough childlike faith yeah. enough to go to God individually and simply ask God for something, receive it, and then tell each other the next day that we did but it. But here's the thing, though, mm -hmm. that I want to say is that it was something that was foreign to us naturally. Mm -hmm. Like for me, I felt weird doing it because I didn't really understand what I didn't know what I was saying. Uh -huh. And I felt like a baby, like mama, dada, mm -hmm. saying like gibberish uh -huh. baby talk. So it was uncomfortable in my flesh. And I was a little bit embarrassed to buy it. And I wasn't going to tell you. I was just like, mm, I could do it. And I wasn't. You were my husband. You know, we were still like, we weren't like that yet, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, and I was still depressed in this moment, mm -hmm. but I didn't, I was embarrassed to tell you. God, we about to give y'all some good stuff today. <laughs> stick with us, people. Stick with us. Stick with us. So for us, I didn't even know what it was that I then went back to church and I went through the process and say, hey, I want to receive the Holy Spirit. And then I realized, oh, I already have it. I didn't even know that it was really it, even though now looking back, that was really it. It was I, it. God had given me a prayer language. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to break this thing down because there is a difference between the baptism of the Holy Spirit and your prayer language. And there's a difference between the tongues that he divides severally as he wills in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and the prayer language that we are speaking of that is for everybody. But I'm telling you now that this was a game changer for our marriage. Absolutely. This was a game changer for our relationship with Jesus. This is a game changer for our entire life. And we love people enough not to leave out any ingredients in this cake that we are baking up on doing life with Ken and Tabitha. Because you know why? We talk about um, a lot about how I overcame uh -huh. um, depression. God healed me, delivered me from 12 years of depression. Yeah. But I did not and was not able to overcome until I was filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I did not have the power uh -huh. to overcome. I could not fight that generational curse on my own. Yeah. But when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, it was like three, three months, months into it. Three months telling it was you, gone. three months gone. into it, I saw the spirit of depression leave go. my life forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's why the, Satan will lie to you all day long, tell you mm -hmm. don't need it, or it's for certain people, or you know, it, it you don't need that today. They had that back in the day. I mean, he will tell you stuff ceased. He'll mm -hmm. do everything that he can to prevent you from walking in yes. supernatural power. Yes. But it's important for us to get everything that the Bible teaches. Mm -hmm. And so 
I, let me make it very simple. Um, I want to talk with our audience today about the baptism of the mm-hmm. Holy Spirit. So when we say, are you filled with the Spirit, it is a synonymous way of mm-hmm. saying, have you received the baptism the of baptism. the Holy Spirit? If you Google that, I'm talking about you just look it up on BibleGateway.com, baptism of the Holy Spirit. You'll see some miraculous things. Even Jesus is the one who baptizes us with the Spirit. But let's break down this word baptize, mm-hmm. okay? So this word baptize isn't coming from a denomination, the Baptist denomination. This word baptize simply means to dip, dunk, immerse, or to cover wholly in. Mm-hmm. And so the Bible doesn't talk about sprinkling. It talks about full immersion. And there's three different baptisms that the scripture talks about, okay? It talks about the baptism into the body of Christ, that's yes. salvation. So when you confess Jesus, turning away from your sin, you are made a part of the body. Mm-hmm. Now, you might be the leg or the knees or the toes or the fingers, but you are a part of the body of Christ. You yes. have been baptized, grafted into the body. That is the baptism into the body of Christ. The Bible talks about the baptism into water. The baptism into water is something that is a command of God that after you accept Jesus as the Lord of your life, Mm -hmm. you should go public with your faith. And so the baptism uh, um, causes you to be identified with the burial and the resurrection of Jesus. Just like Jesus went into the grave for three days, and Mm -hmm. on the third day he rose with all power in his hands. After you get saved, you should go in the water, symbolizing that I've been buried with Christ. Mm -hmm. Just like he went into the grave, I'm going in the water, and when I'm coming up out, it's symbolic that I'm coming out a new creation in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Water baptism is powerful. Water baptism is needed. Even though it is not salvation, it is extremely important right after your salvation. And Jesus was water baptized. Jesus was water baptized. John the Baptist. He commands us all to be baptized. But the third baptism that the Bible speaks of Mm -hmm. is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And this is the one where there's so much confusion because if you don't have power, Satan can actually get a foothold and he can win in territories and areas that he should not be winning. Can we break it down today? Break it down. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, what does it do? Well, let me just say for me, When I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit in 2001, all of a sudden, the Bible began to make sense for me. All of a sudden, I wanted to live a holy life. Before, Mm -hmm. I kind of wanted to go out to D.C. Live, go to the club, go to the Ritz a little bit. I kind of wanted to drink a little bit here and there. I kind of wanted to. I'm not saying this is wrong or right. What I'm saying is that I wasn't fully sold out yet, and you could see it in our marriage. Mm -hmm. Our marriage was headed for divorce because you would irritate me and make me mad, and I didn't know how to have the fruit of the Spirit yet. There was so many. When I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I didn't want to listen to certain music. I didn't want to watch certain movies. Living holy was easy. Going to church was my favorite day. Sunday was my favorite day of the week. It became easy to love you because I wasn't doing it out of my strength, but out of the strength and the power of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And so that's who it was for me, but for you. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I, you know, again, it gave me the power to overcome, Uh overcome depression, to fight for our marriage, to build myself up in confidence. Um, But then also I remember, so Jesus was baptized by water Mm -hmm. in water. Mm -hmm. Um, But then Jesus was also, when he came up from the water, Mm -hmm. the Bible says that the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove. Um, And so Jesus was also baptized Baptized. in the Holy Spirit. But then the Bible goes on to says that now he wasn't baptized by John or, you know, we're not being baptized by John the Baptist in water, Mm -hmm. but Jesus Mm -hmm. baptized us that baptizes us in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But this is one of the things that I love in the Bible is that Jesus was baptized in water, filled with the Holy Spirit, and then he's led into the wilderness, um, into temptation. Mm-hmm. Now, Jesus was over, he overcame temptation in the wilderness. What you just described in your life, how you would, you, you stopped listening to certain music and you, you know, you turned up your thirst and your hunger and your desire to God, right. how I was able to conquer depression. The power of the Holy Spirit gave Jesus the power to overcome temptation. It gives us the power to overcome temptation yeah. and anything that comes into our lives. Mm-hmm. Jesus didn't start ministry right. until he's filled, filled with, the, with Holy the Holy Spirit. Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit in our lives. I love that. Jesus wasn't, he didn't start ministry until he received the Holy mm-hmm. Spirit. And then he told his disciples not to start ministry until they received. He said, go to the wait here, wait here until you receive the promise of the father. Meaning don't go out there and try to beat up the devil if you don't have bullets in your gun. And here's the deal. I believe that there are many people that love Jesus, Mm -hmm. but they give into temptation too easily because they do not have the power that they need. We need power. We need power. All right. Now, here's what I need you. I want you guys to know. Now, different denominations teach different things. And denominations are created because, actually, after the 
uh, the, the Protestant Reformation, it was actually a good thing because there was a section of the church that became too political and people couldn't read the Bible in the Catholic Church and different things were happening to politicize the Catholic Church. So the Protestant Reformation brought about a lot of the denominations, whether it be Beth, Baptist, Methodist, they all came after this Protestant Reformation of Martin Luther. Mm-hmm. And so they started off a very good thing. But see, if you stay too much with your traditions of your denominations and you put down the word of God, you can actually get mm-hmm. off. So actually what started as a good thing and what can even be a good thing today, if you're not careful, you will follow the traditions of man, yes. which sometimes make the word of God null mm-hmm. and in effect. So what I decided to do as a Baptist that was my upbringing, was to not be a Baptist more than I was a Christian. Come on. Not to be a Methodist or Presbyterian or a Catholic more than I am a Christian. I want to be a follower of Jesus that submits my life fully to his word. That's not what the priest is saying, not what the pastor is yes. saying. Not, and I respect all of these different people, yes. but my when I stand before Jesus, I will give an account of what his word says. Mm-hmm. And I believe that there are some people listening yes. to this podcast that want the word. And um, I want to give it to you today. Mm -hmm. Matthew 311. Let's just go through some teaching. It says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he was coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, who is speaking here? Do you know who's speaking? You're no. not paying attention. He says, I indeed <laughs> baptize you. <laughs> He's just over there smiling. John the Baptist. No. Uh, I'm sorry. I had a different thought no, in my you mind. You are right. It is John, the, John Baptist. the Baptist. My yeah. bad. I was about to say Jesus. No. You know? Watch. Thank you for. Yeah. So I indeed baptize you with water. Mm-hmm. So John the Baptist baptized with water. Mm-hmm. And and like there's many of us who we, we never make a big to do about water baptism. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows mm-hmm. that we need to get water baptized. Yeah. But what he's saying is that there's one who's coming after me that's Greater mightier than, than I. I. He baptizes mm-hmm. you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Who's that? Jesus. Jesus. So John is going to get you wet. And that's cool and everything. But I don't want just what John has. I want what Jesus is. Yes. Having. It's almost like whatever Jesus has given us, I want that more Come than anything on. else. And what it says is that Jesus baptizes us with the Holy Spirit and with fire. This is not a bad fire. This is a purifying Mm -hmm. fire. This is, come on, this is, this is a good fire. This is the the power of God and we should want that in our life. So I think the first thing is to position ourselves to receive whatever Jesus has for us. Acts chapter two, verse 38, it Mm -hmm. says, then Peter said to them, repent, let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise is for you, for your children, for all who are far off and as many as our Lord God shall call. I love Acts chapter two, verse 38, because he says, let every one of you be baptized, Mm -hmm. not just in water baptism, but after that, you're going to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And this is for those of you all who say, well, I just don't think that gift is for me. I just think it's for somebody else. I think it's for the holy people. Not everybody has that gift. He makes it clear. This gift is for you. Mm -hmm. Somebody say it's for me. It's for me. It's for your children. It's to all those who are far off. As many as God has called. I do not believe that you're watching this podcast Mm -hmm. or listening by accident. I believe that God's calling you deeper. Mm -hmm. And so I I just want to help somebody because, you know, that whole like, well, that gift ain't for me. It's like salvation. Salvation. That gift is a the gift of salvation is available for anybody who mm-hmm. wants it. The gift of the Holy Spirit is available for anybody who wants it. Do not confuse that with sign gifts in 1 Corinthians 12, where he divides Talk severally as he wills. The Holy Spirit is available for every born again believer. Yes. We all need this gift and it's available for everybody. OK, now listen to this. A few more scriptures. Acts 19 okay. and one. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul passed through the upper regions, he came to Ephesus and finding some disciples, everybody say disciples. This, these were people that were already believers. Watch what he says. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So he's asking other believers, had they received the Holy Spirit? They said to him, we've not so much heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. That's where I was for many years. And he said to them, and then what were you baptized? So they said into John's baptism, meaning that they got in the pool and got wet. Right. Then Paul said, John, he baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people, they should believe on him who should come after him. That's yes. on Christ Jesus. Verse five. All right. 
But when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, not in them, but upon them, not in them, but upon them. And they spoke in tongues and they prophesied. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's so much in Acts 19. Um, I'm going to let you jump in in just a minute. The first thing that I see is that there were certain disciples, okay, Mm -hmm. that was there. Certain disciples that had received Jesus, they were, they were Christians, but they had not yet received the Holy Mm -hmm. Spirit. There are millions of people today believing in Jesus, but they had not yet received the Holy Spirit. They need the, they need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in them. But he says when he laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon, upon them. them. I let you go. Go ahead and go. Go ahead. I go. mean, I just love it too <laughs> that he, that they spoke in tongues uh-huh. and prophesied. Yeah. It's just like I mean, I don't know. Um, I, I actually in, have questions in my mind because I'm hearing it from a, a different angle right now. Um, yeah. But it spoke in tongues and prophesied. So there's just always there's the speaking in tongues where when you speak in tongues, you could be prophesying. You know, the will of God, the word of God, as you speak in tongues, it's building yourself up on your most holy faith. You know, all of those things. But and prophesy side, mm-hmm. meaning that, you know, the receiving the power of the Holy Ghost, mm-hmm. of the Holy Spirit will enable you to be able to, you know, prophesy, to declare the word I, of the I, Lord. Yeah, I know that's the, the part that you want to lean into I right know, now. I know, I know. We're not talking about I, that. Let's but come back and do a whole nother up. podcast about prophecy. Okay. But what I want people to hear is that here is a, a, a sign in scripture mm-hmm. that when they received the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. we knew it because they spoke in tongues and yes. prophesied. Meaning that those two things went together. Yes. It's not saying that they have to. Nobody's going to make you speak right. in tongues. Right. Nobody's going to make you prophesy. Right. This has to be something that you want to do. Mm-hmm. 23 years old, my heart was open in childlike faith, both yes. of us. And yes. it was that easy. We didn't yes. have to tarry. We didn't have to wait. We didn't have to be perfect people. All we had to do was ask. But this is what I want them to see in Scripture, okay? They received the Holy Spirit. They prayed in tongues and they prophesied. It was a conjunction here, mm-hmm. all right? Now, Acts chapter 10, verse 43, while Peter was still speaking these words, The Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word and those of the circumcision who believed. They were astonished as many as came with Peter because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also, Mm. for they heard them speak in tongues and magnify God. Okay, now this is a powerful scripture. Once again, the Holy Spirit came on the inside of the, not just the inside, but he was, he fell upon them and they knew that they had received the Holy Spirit for they heard them speak in tongues. Once again, second proof text where the baptism of the Holy Spirit and this praying in tongues, or let's just from this moment, call it a prayer language Mm -hmm. that God gives. It was a simultaneous thing that's available for every believer who receives the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I love it here because it was almost like, um, they received the Holy Spirit, I believe in this passage, even before they got water baptized. So it doesn't matter if you get water baptized first and then you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit or you get the baptism of the Holy Spirit, then you go get water baptized. We just need to make sure that all three baptisms we have. Okay. I'll give you one more. Luke chapter 11, verse number nine, it says, so I say to you, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find, knock and it'll be open. Now, I was in Sunday school as a boy, and we had this scripture up everywhere. I mean, ask, and it should, And many of you guys, you've heard this before, knock and it shall be open. Did you know that the context of that, of that promise mm. is talking about the Holy Spirit? Mm. It's not just talking about any random right, thing. Right, right. It says, for everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be open. If, you, if, if, if a son asks mm-hmm. bread for a father among you, will you give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he give him a scorpion? Here's the, here's the post text. If you then being evil or natural yep. know how to give good gifts to your children, how, how much, much more, more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? You don't have to tarry, wait, beg, or be perfect. 23 and 25 years old, I think you were, mm-hmm. we just went upstairs into our bedroom and we asked. And that's really all people have to do today is say, God, I want the Holy Spirit the same way that you did it all throughout the book of Acts. Everybody that we read about, he, he made it a, a point to go get disciples, right. 
get them filled with the Holy Spirit so that they could have power. And part of that package comes this prayer language. And it wasn't, we didn't wait until we got our marriage together. We didn't wait until we um, joined the church. We didn't wait till we uh, started studying the Bible and praying more and yeah. started, you know, just doing all, like changed our life around. We'll wait till Monday because, you know, on Monday, you right. know, I'll get it all together or yeah. whatever. No, we just went as we were because uh-huh. we didn't have to qualify for it. Yeah. We can't be, Jesus has already made us righteous. You know what I mean? We, we already received everything. We right. receive, we are the ch- a child of God and all we have to do is ask. Wow. Wow. So I want to give a, a, some people an out. If you say, well, pastor, I don't want that at all. That's t- completely between you yep. and God. We are not trying to force anything on you. But mm-hmm. this is what I know about our audience. There are some people that's like, sign me up for that. Yeah. There are some people who have that same spirit of faith that Ken and Tabitha Clater has that's like, God, if you said it, I want it. If Whatever you show Jesus it to me, I'll has take for it. me, I want if it. If it's in the Bible, I don't care about my denomination. I don't care about what somebody said before. I just want whatever Jesus has for me. I want it all. If that's you, this is your day. This is what we want you to understand. Number one, when you get saved, the Holy Spirit lives in you. But there is a second and separate experience where he comes upon you, covering you with his power, his presence. Number two, the gift of the Holy Spirit is not just for some people. Like, I don't have that gift. This is a gift that's available for everybody. Mm -hmm. And number three, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is followed by power, the fruit of the Spirit, and also this prayer language that is available for anybody who wants it, okay? And I want you to know one of the greatest things that changed our marriage is what we just shared with you today. When I do not know what to pray for, naturally I can pray. And I don't need to be emotional. I'm around a settlement table, and it looks like things aren't going right. What's that? That is my spirit praying. You say, what does it mean? My intellect doesn't catch up on it, but my spirit is praying to God who is a spirit what Romans 8 calls the perfect will of God, what Jude 20 says that we build up our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And when you go to a hospital room, somebody had an accident and they got hooked up to tubes, you don't know what you need to pray for as you ought. But the Holy Spirit who is is going to use your, 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 your spirit to pray and make intercession according to the perfect will of God. Mm-hmm. This is an ammunition that we all need. We need to be praying this way. Not we just need, for us, but for, for us, other people. Not for us, for our kids, for our families. Yeah. God knows. Like, really... I mean, you can pray and it's like, oh, what else should I pray for? Listen, my intellect doesn't know what I need to be mm-hmm. praying for around the world. God knows what's coming tomorrow today. And so I'm not trying to make um, this prayer language bigger than what it is, but it's important. The first thing is power. Yeah. We all need power. Mm-hmm. We need dunamis, miracle working power in mm-hmm. our life. Jesus himself said, go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the father that you've been hearing me talk about. He was like, listen, mm-hmm. don't go try to cast out devils in your name. Wait on the power of the spirit. You're going to need this. Yes. And so I don't know about you, but I want everything that he's given me. Mm-hmm. And so we live in a day and time where I, I just feel like, especially Generation Z, they're not interested in our philosophy and our talk. When I read about Paul, he didn't just teach with men's wisdom. He taught with signs following, with the demonstrations of the Spirit's power. Right. And Paul said, I pray in tongues more, more than, than all, all of you. <laughs> yeah. He was always praying in tongues. More than everybody. But look at the power that manifested on his life. There is actually churches that will say, don't pray in tongues. And the Bible says the opposite. It says, do not forbid praying in tongues. Mm. And so the only person or entity that wants to stop this would be Satan himself. He, d- he wants a powerless church. Mm. And so we would love to pray for you. Um, I want to start off with salvation, which is just calling on the name of the Lord. And so wherever you are, if you would like to receive Jesus as the Lord of your life, all you have to do is surrender and just say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart today. Forgive me of my sins. I turn from my way to your way. I believe that you are the Lord and I accept you as Savior of my life. In Jesus name, I am saved. That is the only prerequisite. Now, those of you all who are saved, you're born again. Man, Holy Spirit lives in you. There is a second experience where he wants to come upon you, and that's a simple prayer as well. 
I would love to pray that with you today. And I believe that the power of God will use our technology because there's no distance in the spirit. Some of you all are watching this right now. Some of you all will be watching this next week, next month, next year. But whenever you watch it, we believe it's a Kairos moment for you, that it is the divine timing of God, yes. that you didn't just run into this episode. You didn't just get to the end for no reason, yes. but you are a candidate to receive supernatural power from mm -hmm. God. And mm -hmm. we would love for you to receive the same. Mm -hmm. And so if that's you and you say, Pastor, I want to be, I want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, will you just bow your head if you're not driving? If you are driving, just say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, would you baptize me with the power of the Holy Spirit? Say, Holy Spirit, come now. I accept you. I receive you in your fullness. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, we just pray that the Holy Spirit is falling on you right now, receive it, okay? Now, if you sense the presence of the Lord, or even by faith, I believe that with that baptism of the Holy Spirit, God will also give you a prayer language. And you can just begin to pray with us. We release it right now. <laughs> There you go. You're receiving it now. That's it. That's the power of the Spirit. All right. Now, listen, you want to start praying like that mm -hmm. more and more. You know, it's just like natural children. When a natural child starts to talk, they say, Dad, Dad, and Mama. But the more they talk, the more it develops into, Hey, Dad, can you go get me a sandwich? You know? And so the more and more you pray in the spirit, the more you'll start mm -hmm. sounding a lot like us. For some of you all, that was the weirdest thing you ever did. Congratulations. Welcome to the next level. So that has nothing to do with your flesh. Your spirit man now is alive. And it's like, OK, this is kingdom matters now. You are a peculiar people, a holy <laughs> nation, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. That's who you are. All right. And so for those of you all who are like, you know what? I wasn't able to pray that way. You don't have to get down or discouraged. Just keep on asking mm -hmm. God. Keep on seeking. Keep on knocking until you find. OK, we would love to answer any questions that you might have about this the best that we can. Um, you can email us about that. There's some teachings that you can find. I mean, we have stuff on different podcasts and on our church side to help you grow in this mm -hmm. in this area, because this is actually not the ending. Yeah. This is actually the beginning. Yeah. The baptism of the Holy Spirit actually opens up a door now for the supernatural side of God, which is um, nine gifts of the spirit found in first Corinthians chapter number um, chapter number 12. Um, you, you know, miracle signs, wonders, all kinds of things really come after the, mm -hmm. the, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So I would say this. Congratulations. OK, keep on seeking. Keep on knocking. Let's see what God's going to yeah. do with this. And, you know, I see um, there are several people who are dealing with addiction, and this has been the missing link for you. Mm -hmm. You've tried to overcome in the past, and you ha didn't have the power to overcome. Now the Holy Spirit is empowering you to overcome. Mm -hmm. um, I see addiction, um, pornography addiction, mm -hmm. and sex addiction. Mm -hmm. You are going to be able, you are overcoming right now in Jesus' name. You have the power to overcome. So I want want to encourage you to right now claim it mm -hmm. um, right now say that I am free mm -hmm. and expect to never smoke again never drink again never to um, participate in pornographic you know mm -hmm. imagery or anything again say it out of your mouth and then just do it and you will see that the power of God is with you yeah. to back up what you say yeah. the Lord gave me a woman named Melissa and he also gave me a word shame and maybe you've been dealing with a lot of guilt mm -hmm. and you've been dealing with a lot of shame. God is breaking the shackles of shame over your soul. And I want you to know that you've been chosen by God, hand selected by God, that you are honored by God and loved by God. And you don't mm -hmm. have to feel bad about the mistakes that you've made in the past or the sin of yesteryear. God is doing a new thing on the inside of you. Would you receive it right now? I hear fresh starts for you. Amen. I hear new beginnings for you. I, I see you as a slingshot that God has been pulling you back to launch you out forward. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's the word of the Lord for you. I believe that's the word of the Lord. Anything else, Amen. sweetheart? Mm -mm. Anything else? Okay. This is good. All right. We love you guys. Hey, comment. Let us know what you received today. Email us. Um, share this message with people around the world, especially disciples of Jesus who, just like in Acts 19, hadn't even heard where there'd be a Holy Spirit. I want you to know that the Holy Spirit 
is the God with us that is in the earth. We don't have three gods. We have three, one God that manifests as three distinct persons, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is here right now, and he's still moving today. If this is your first time joining our podcast, man, we just want to say welcome to the family. If you would like to subscribe, hit the button below on YouTube so that you can be the first to get the content when it's released. Yes. We release a new episode every Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern. If you're on podcast, Apple Music, wherever you get your podcast, make sure that you hit the download button as well because we don't want you to miss out. We got a new thing called the Better Marriage Boot Camp where a whole lot of people are going through it to have a better marriage. We would love for you to join us as well on a 90-day journey with yours truly. You can find more information about that at KenandTabitha.com or the link that is in our show notes if you're ever in Orlando. Matter of fact, I got something special that's happening. If tickets are still available, you got to check it out. But past, but Tabitha and I, we are celebrating 25 years of marriage yes. on July the 3rd, and we are having a special 25-year anniversary mm -hmm. gala. It's going to be a fundraising gala, and all of the proceeds are going to go help people who've been dealing with cancer, overcoming cancer, families who have. And we're actually celebrating not just 25 years of being married, but also her three years of being cancer-free. And we are going to dance. We are going to party like Amen. you ain't never been to a party. <laughs> we're going to eat well. We got special guests. I heard we might even be launching a book there and uh, maybe even renewing our vows for 25 oh. years. And we just said, you know what? Let's invite our audience. If you want to come in and spend July 4th in Orlando, we invite you to come. You can check out if there are any tickets available. This thing is um, going to sell out quickly. You can check it out at Ken, KenandTabitha.com as well. We love you guys, and we'll see you next week. God bless you. Peace. Peace.